Hello there. So far this winter, we've been talking a lot about the wet and windy conditions and the waterlogged fields, but more recently, we've seen the other face of winter, and that is colder weather and, in the last day or so, uh, some snow as well. So this was a scene this morning in West Yorkshire at Slathwaite, or just outside of the village there, uh, with snow covering the ground, about 350 metres uh, above sea level. So quite a few hills in northern Britain have seen a bit of snow during the last couple of days or so. Uh, this is where we've seen some accumulating snow just on Monday itself. So this runs between midnight to midnight uh, on Monday this week. Using radar estimates of where snow has been falling, and you can see quite a number of these hills across Scotland, parts of the Pennine, southern Scotland, and also parts of uh, the Republic of Ireland too, seeing a bit of snow accumulating. Not necessarily sticking around for very long, but uh, some snow nonetheless, just a hint that things have got a bit colder lately and a bit more like what we should be seeing uh, at this time of the year. And that came courtesy of a dip in the jet stream. This is the pattern today with a jet stream largely to the south of the UK. That means we're in this upper trough here, which is fairly cold air in the upper atmosphere, driving plenty of showers, but also bringing those temperatures down as well. But it is a fairly short-lived cold spell because as I run the sequence through the rest of the week, some ridging at times, but overall the jet streams are lifting a bit further north, mild conditions then returning, and the flow is largely then coming in from the southwest. So that means temperatures will be on the rise uh, this week. And towards the weekend, quite an active piece of jet stream you'll notice here uh, pushing towards the UK, which means it will turn quite wet and windy again in particular through the course of uh, this weekend. So all change uh, yet again. To start off with though, this is the pattern as we look at Wednesday, there is actually hints of uh, ridging developing across southern parts of the UK here. Still though, some showers across northern Britain. Again, there's still a bit of winteriness on the hills, but less so than we've seen over the last few days. And actually as we run towards Thursday, a couple of things going on. This frontal feature to the south, a second area of low pressure to the north, sort of joining forces over the UK. So more cloud by Thursday, a bit breezy and a little bit of patchy rain here and there, but no massive amounts really away from parts of Scotland where it could actually be quite wet through Wednesday uh, and into Thursday. And again, a bit of hill snow here uh, as well. Now looking further ahead towards Friday, that first feature clears away. We get another temporary ridge building in and then the next weather front comes in. But again, it's a weakening feature, so not a huge amount of rain across some southern and eastern parts of the UK. But again, still quite windy and quite wet across western parts of Scotland where you've just got that persistent westerly flow coming in off the Atlantic. So you get the idea we're in this sort of trough ridge pattern with weak fronts coming in to give us some rain, then a ridge builds in for some slightly quieter weather uh, before, as you can see, the next front comes in to give us a little bit more rain. Up until this point, we haven't seen a huge amount of rain in the south and the east, but I think that will change over the weekend. So this is the pattern running into the weekend. We've got to keep an eye on the wave on that front uh, Friday night. And then for Saturday, dry at first, but the next area of low pressure coming in. Bit of uncertainty about the timing of this, but there could well be some heavy, uh, more persistent rain developing more widely across the UK at some point through the weekend. And again, the isobars tightening means it will be quite breezy. But if you follow the direction of these isobars, way out over the Atlantic, so this is fairly mild air coming in, temperatures in the low to perhaps even mid-teens, and actually not much in the way of frost for the second half of this week as well. So exceptionally mild end to January after what was a very mild start to January as well. Now the overall pattern expected into the beginning of next week, don't take this too literally, just using this as a schematic if nothing else, but the idea is we're likely to have some persistent rain somewhere across southern parts of the UK perhaps uh, on Monday. To the north of it turning a little bit colder but still some rain or showers here as well, so it's an unsettled start to next week. But by the time we get through to the middle of next week it looks quite likely that high pressure will start to build in. And that's going to settle things down for many areas, it's likely to build somewhere to the west of the UK. So on the eastern side of it, we're actually going to be experiencing a run of northerly winds coming down from the Arctic. A lot of cold air then spilling south over the UK, over the relatively warm waters of the North Sea, for example, which will be perfect then for generating quite a few showers. So middle of next week, dry, mostly dry inland, cold, some frost overnight, but some crisp sunshine by day. But uh, near these coastal parts, particularly the northeast coast, uh, we could see some wintry showers coming in. So the return, perhaps for some of us, of some wintry showers initially on the hills, but wouldn't want to rule out at this stage uh, a little bit of sleet or snow getting down to some lower levels uh, in places. But as to how much snow, if, if any, uh, yet really to be decided, still a long way uh, away in forecasting terms. To give you an idea of how things are looking right now at the time of recording, this is the percent chance of seeing snow falling and that's all it is, falling, not necessarily accumulating, uh, during the 24 hours of Wednesday the 5th of February. And you get the sense that the bulk of any wintry showers are towards the east, 
and the north, especially on high ground, and then running down these uh, North Sea coast down towards East Anglia. So for parts of East Anglia, for example, the green shading there, that's about a 30% chance of seeing some snow. And also we'll have showers filtering down the Irish Sea into parts of Wales, maybe also parts of Southwest England, depending on the exact wind direction uh, at the time. So just a hint towards the middle and latter part of next week that there could be a return to some colder northerly winds with some wintry showers in perhaps in some places that haven't seen any so far uh, this week. Then for the end of next week, some uncertainty, the confidence starts to drop away really towards the end of the week, but the high might shift a bit further towards the south and the west, probably toppling over the UK for a time. So widespread frost, there may well be some fog during the latter part of next week, but towards the weekend, the high shrinking away a little bit more perhaps and allowing fronts to start coming back into the north of the UK. Now in doing so, what's actually going to happen is we're going to bring in westerly winds so milder Atlantic air gradually working its way back in, but perhaps for a time the cold air just hanging on in the lower levels of the atmosphere, which means perhaps quite a lot of clouds some mist and murk around, similar to what we saw last week actually, uh, before eventually some rain coming into the north and the west of the UK, and eventually the winds picking up perhaps into the following week as well. So a short-lived cold spell, if you like, during the second half of next week, and then perhaps sort of business as usual for the week after that, going deeper on into uh, February. Now, with that cold air coming in towards the middle of next week, frost then becomes more of a concern uh, for sugar beet growers, for example. This is how things are looking for Bedford using our ensemble data. So what you can see here actually is some fairly mild conditions over the next few nights, especially through the weekend, with the minimum temperature down the left-hand side here on each day likely to be somewhere between, say, 5 and 10 degrees, and on some nights perhaps staying in double figures. So exceptionally mild through this spell here, no real frost worries to start with. But later on into next week, you can see how it starts to drop away. And some of these members, depending on how things play out, if we get the ridge building in with clear skies and the winds in land easing, could well be quite a hard frost in some places, perhaps below minus 5 in the usual prone spots. But if we've got more cloud because of the showers, we've got more wind as well, then that will obviously limit how low the temperatures get at night. But a clear trend here towards colder nights with a return to more widespread frost likely by the middle part of uh, next week. And also using that ensemble data on this particular graph here, each of these lines, these gray lines, is a different computer model. And we merge them all together to get an average, which is this red line. And you can follow the trends. The black line here, that's the average for the time of the year. The red line is the average of all of these little gray lines. And you can see the trend towards above average temperatures uh, later on this week and into the weekend. This is for 850 millibars, so that's actually a mile above the ground. It's an indication of the type of air mass over the UK, in this case for Bedford. So above average temperatures later this week and into the beginning of the weekend. And then you can see the temperatures going below average during the middle part of next week. But you can also see it's actually relatively short lived, just a few days, and then they gradually start to recover again towards the weekend and on into the following week. So returning back closer to normal temperatures as we go further on uh, into February. Uh, as well. So quite a bit going on. If you're trying to get out and about onto the fields, for example, if you're concerned about frost coming up, that sort of thing, then by all means give our forecasters a ring. We're available every single day from six in the morning through until six in the evening. We're constantly looking at a lot of data, some of the stuff I've shown you, but much more uh, besides that as well. And we can hopefully, hopefully give you uh, the information you require in order to make those important decisions going forward in time. So this is how things are looking for the week two period. This is the early part of February across Europe. Big red anomaly here, high pressure then, somewhere over or to the west of the UK. And generally with the blue colors here, that's where pressure is lower than normal. So across Eastern Europe, Western Russia. And with that, we're expecting this sort of north northwesterly flow to develop across a good chunk of Europe, but short lived, don't forget, during the middle part of the week. So actually the temperature anomalies, which is for the whole week, not just for that short two day, two, three day cold spell during the middle part of the week, are still above average across many parts of Europe, especially towards the east, where this has been the story all winter and even late autumn, where temperatures across Eastern Europe and Western Russia have been well above where they should be and continue to look like that will be the case uh, through this spell as well. And in terms of rainfall, where, where the high pressure is across the west, near or below average, I suspect this may be underplaying the risk of showers somewhat because those on the east coast, if you do get a lot of showers coming in off the sea, it could actually be quite wet here, but actually a short distance inland could end up being quite dry through uh, next week as well. So that's just something to bear in mind. But the wettest conditions where low pressure is more dominant across central and eastern parts of Europe 
uh, in particular through this week. Then beyond that, into the further part of February, the high pressure is shrinking to the south somewhat, so we're getting a return of westerly winds now coming in off the Atlantic. The storm tracks the low pressures generally to the north of the UK still. So I think it's going to be more of a trough ridge pattern than sort of persistent unsettled weather initially. So we'll still get some ridges coming in as this area of high pressure occasionally lifts up to the north, like we're seeing at the moment to give us the odd dry day. And then it retreats again, allowing low pressure to come in to give us some wet and windy weather. So that's what we mean by the sort of trough ridge pattern. One day wet, the next day dry. Uh, in terms of temperature, again, because it's coming in off the Atlantic, it is above average again across a good chunk of Europe here. And in terms of rainfall, well, after that dry signal for next week, uh, quite a strong signal here for above average rainfall across central Western Britain, near normal in the far east of the UK, and still fairly dry actually across a good chunk of the Mediterranean down here as well, where that high pressure has there retreated to basically. Then for week four, high pressure is still roughly in the same place, low pressure still to the north, if anything having slightly more of an influence on the UK. So that's a change in the forecast from last week, for example, where the high looked a little bit more dominant, looking less likely now and more likely that low pressure could become more dominant through the middle part of February. And what does that mean? Well, again, westerly wind, so it's still mild off the Atlantic, no sign of any prolonged cold weather uh, at this stage, apart from the odd colder day here and there. Uh, and in terms of rainfall, well, well above average, of course, a good chunk of Europe showing up here, especially across parts of the UK, but also across Scandinavia, Northern Europe as well. And again, with a high pressure to the south, that's where the drier conditions will be with below average rainfall showing up here as well. So just to recap those uh, four weeks that we've just gone through, the rest of this week and into the early part of next week will be fairly changeable. There'll be some rain at times, but also some drier and brighter weather too. And generally speaking, especially this weekend, it will be very mild indeed, especially by night where there is going to be a distinct lack of frost through the second half of this week away from northern Britain. Colder though towards the middle of next week onwards, and with that we'll see a return to frost. Some of that could be hard, depending on how things play up. And with that, some wintry showers, especially near coastal areas. And then temperatures probably recovering to near normal by the end of next weekend beyond towards the middle part of February. But with that, this changeable trough ridge pattern. Uh, so some dry days, but also some wet days as well. But uh, no sign of any prolonged dry weather showing up at this stage. So that's how things are looking over the next four weeks. As ever, you can keep up to date with the latest forecast by following us on social media.